Well, once again, everyone, welcome to Baby Steps. Bart Bartlett here with the lovely Peggy Simpson. Peggy, how are you this beautiful Tuesday? Well, I'm doing terrific in this pouring down rain that we've been having this afternoon. You guys got rain? It's oh. sun flooding over here. Oh, no. We've had a downpour over up here. Oh, my. We don't even live 30 minutes away from each other. Yeah. <laughs> and it's yeah, yeah. sun flooding over That just tells you scattered thunderstorms are in it. Yeah. But otherwise, it's been good. It's been good. And I'm so excited about your session today. Can't well, wait. Let's get the party started because this one's going to be kind of, today's going to be a little bit of a, of a review of everything we've done to set the stage for what we're really going to talk about. And at the end, I think you'll start to see where it's going to come together and make some sense. At least that's my intention here. So let me share my screen. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm calling this the Millennial Millionaire Mindset. And I'm kind of subtitling the keys to the vault. Uh, and you might think, what would I know about being a millennial? Well, you're right. I probably don't know a whole lot about <laughs> being a millennial. So there is a subtitle to all of this. And the subtitle is that it works at any age. And so what we're going to talk about today are things that you can do right now to create that mindset that millennials have that really can, can take them into another dimension of creating the success they, they look to create. It's all about unlocking potentialities. And this is a, a direct quote that says, the path to becoming a millionaire or reaching financial freedom is not an overnight get rich quick scheme. It all begins by creating a vision, setting goals and establishing priorities. The takeaway I want you to get from that, don't focus on financial freedom. Focus on your vision, your goals, and your priorities. A couple of slides, you're going to start to see where this will make some sense. Quick definitions. Who are millennials? Millennials are people reaching young adulthood in the early 21st century. Most social networking groups are dominated by the millennial generation. And I'll even go as far as to say they've redefined networking groups, uh, social networking groups. For example, Facebook. Facebook has pretty much become your grandmother's social networking group. Well, be careful now. Be careful. <laughs> <laughs> be careful now. As Their grandmothers, to, maybe. <laughs> as opposed to, um, you know, something else that's out there because they're always looking for new and different things. Mm -hmm. So millennial is really about being a mindset of being open to investigate. So what is a mindset? It's established set of attitudes. And you are being presented with two choices with your mindset. You can either evolve from it or you can repeat it. And I've, we got a bunch of folks joining us. I want to say hello to William, Darius, Andy, Merle, Therese, and Dan all on the call right now. Remember and we'll those add people? Emma and Amberia, Amber here. Awesome. That's a great, a great group we have going here. Visions, goals, priorities. That's where we're headed. Creating a vision. Now, visualization for for ever since the beginning of time has been an effective strategy that produces high achievers, produces entrepreneurs, it produces results. But here's what's interesting. A survey that TD Bank uh, did recently revealed visualization was very important to 66% of millennials, 43% of Gen Xers, and only 18% of baby boomers. Peggy, your thoughts on that before we go too far? Well, I would have to say that I probably represent the classic baby boomer here. Um, I am a baby boomer. And visualization has always been a harder concept for me to accept and put faith in. Yeah. Even though I've heard stories right? I've heard lots of stories of people describing how they made a vision board, put pictures up, had everything really specifically designed, the type of home they wanted, the type of car they wanted to drive, so on and so forth. And 
at the right time when they looked back, the house or car, or whatever that they actually ended up owning was identical or so close to what they had as their vision. Um, so I've heard their stories and they were probably Gen Xers that were telling me the stories. Uh, um, not so much the millennials for me, uh, but I know it has been a harder concept, even though I know the evidence says how critically important it is mm -hmm. as an ingredient to success. It's been a harder thing for me to, to get used to, right? And to actually take seriously mm -hmm. for me. Well, and I, I think too, when you look at those three categories, millennial, Gen Xers, and baby boomers, and look at the way that that's just like a, 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 a triangle where it comes down mm -hmm. and the number of people that, that visualize, I think that's also relative to the experiences that people have. Baby yes. boomers, especially today, um, many, if not most, are retired and they're looking just to chill and not do a whole lot. Uh, they're, they're, they're coasting. And so visualization may not be as important. Gen Xers are kind of caught in the middle of it. Millennials are ones that have everything ahead of them in the future. But there's a quote that I love and that I live by when it comes to visualization. And it comes from Helen Keller, who says the only thing worse than being blind is having sight with no vision. Yeah, and I, I also, th oh, sorry, go hey. ahead. No, no, go ahead, Peggy. So uh, adding to what you were saying, you know, about the baby boomers versus the Gen Xers and the millennials, I think it also has to do with the fact that as baby boomers, we were raised with the traditional mindset, right? The, the society pressures were much greater. This is what you do. Go to high school, you graduate, you get a job, you stay there, you retire, life is great, right? In between there somewhere, you marry, you have your kids, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. The Gen Xers coming behind us began to see the transition of corporate America so they began to have, have begun to open their minds earlier in their 30s and 40s, perhaps, to see that, okay, corporate life is not what historically people have said it is. There's more to life. There's more important things than just maintaining a job, a status, title, and whatever. And the millennials, right, are totally in a gig economy. Mm -hmm. They are willing to open up, try things. It doesn't, they don't seem to be burdened with the fear of failure as much, not nearly as much as the baby boomers. I, I totally, totally agree with that. And I, I think that, you know, the Gen Xers uh, somewhat, but a big part of the baby boomers, baby boomers did not grow up in the Mac world. We didn't have the technology, the computers. In fact, Steve Jobs and I are born on the exact same day. I mean, the exact same day. You know, they said they said Apple. I went and got fruit. Look what he did. <laughs> um, you know? But but millennials, that's part of who they are. Yeah. And the way they get ahead is to embrace that constant, constant change. You mentioned something real critical earlier, and that is vision boards. And vision boards are a very effective way to capture not only the type of income you want to create, but more importantly, the type of lifestyle you want to live. My office is a vision board. Mm -hmm. You'll see what's around me. In many ways, your room, your office is a vision board too, because your grandson's stuff is there. So you're, you're, you're uh, seeing your future self as someone that's providing a legacy for him. I brought my journal with me. And I don't know if you can see it well enough or not, but the journal has a vision board taped to the front of it. So it's a constant reminder of what it is I'm looking to create. So how do you do a vision board? It's fairly easy, but it can be taxing. And that is you just start by writing a vision statement. And that vision statement could be a very short note, a very short letter to your future self. Here's where you see yourself five, 10, 15, 20 years down the road. Include not only how you see your future, but also how you envision it developing as well. 
then ask yourself, and this is where I think you have such a strength of what you're doing there for Noah. If you were to be known for a legacy, what would that legacy ideally be and who would it benefit? And I, I think you and I are, are kind of a, a paradox here because you've got a very strong family, uh, two beautiful kids. You've got a grandkid. You're about to have a son-in-law that's going to be part of your family. I got nothing over here. You know, <laughs> I don't have a family. So what is my legacy? What is my that, that, that I want to live, leave ideally? There's some organizations that I'm incredibly passionate about. They are going to be part of my legacy. And a lot of what I'm doing moves it in that direction. Our good friend Google can show you how to create a vision board. And there's a lot of ideas out there. And there's a lot of free apps you can download to your iPad or your smartphones to do it. But here's what I want you to remember most of all about vision and vision boards. Chase the vision, not the money. The money will end up following you. Yep. What we're doing with Millennial Mindset is not about how do you become rich? How do you become part of the lifestyle of the rich and famous? It's about how do you create a vision? Because once you have it and you move toward it, then what you're looking to create is going to start following you. Any comments on vision boards? We'll go to our, our next one. Yeah, I think, and to your point there about, you know, don't focus on the money, as you can see in your example there, right? You focus on your life, what you want for your life, who you want to be, where you want to be, who you want to be with, what kind of relationships you want to have, you know, what your lifestyle would be, um, not just a financial dollar amount. Right. In fact, if it were me personally, I wouldn't even have a dollar amount, probably. Mm -hmm. I would phrase it in a different way. So, you know, I would say, I want lifestyle freedom. Right. Where I can decide when I get up, where I can decide what I do that day, where I can decide where I go. And in being able to do all of that, all the bills are paid and we are comfortable to handle any emergency. That's how I would probably phrase the desire to have enough wealth and finance to cover what I wanted my life to be. And, and I just as you said that, maybe think about the, the three groups of people, the boomers, the Gen Xers, and the millennials. I would think most boomers would do exactly what you just said. They'll look at a lifestyle because that lifestyle of freedom there is what's important. Gen Xers probably in the middle. Millennials may be much more money oriented with their vision of what they want to create because um, the way the, the world is evolving and moving, we may not know what the next economy is going to look like. So they have that piece there with them. All right. So we talked about the vision. We've done quite a great deal of work through all the series about goals. So this is going to be real quick and kind of a review, but more importantly, everything that we've talked about and everything you'll probably hear us talking about going forward, you got to have goals. You got to have goals that you write down or that you or that you record that are solid, that are attainable. And they're called SMART goals. And that, of course, is an acronym. So the S, be specific. Be specific with what you want. You need to set real numbers and real deadlines and avoid saying, I want more money. I want customers. I want to lose weight. Be specific with it or you're not going to be able to achieve it. Secondly, Make sure it's measurable, trackable, and you're able to view the progress. Uh, avoid words like, you know, this is my brand. Here's what I'm going to do. Or, or this is, I'm doing this to create some type of, a, of a, a social impact on something. And I'll give you an example of the two right there together. Just this Sunday, I achieved a goal I set for myself. And I achieved it a month early. There was a specific number of customers I wanted to get for my business. And I got it. But the whole time from February, when I only had 500, I say only, but I had 500 customers in February to this Sunday when I reached my goal of 2020 in 2020 and I reached a month early, what was I doing? I was very specific. I was measuring it. I was tracking it. And then I made it 
achievable. I knew it was within my power to accomplish it. It was going to be tough and challenging. And I couldn't just be like on bewitched or I dream a genie and twitch my nose or go and there it would be for me. I had to be able to create something. So was it realistic? Could I realistically achieve it? And what I like about the realistic part is you've got to be honest. You've got to acknowledge the hurdles, but you also got to realize that just because you may not reach it doesn't mean that you lost. It means that you were honest and you got further than you were when you started. And then is it timely? Give yourself a deadline. My deadline initially when I set myself out to do 2020 and 2020 was the end of 2020. And then we had an event in February where I was recognized for the 500. And I was being interviewed by a a person there on TV. And I said, you know what? I'm going to do it by the next event. And at that time, I had no idea when the next event was going to be. So I really put myself out there and then found out it was going to be August 21st. So I knew I had to get it done. That event now, because of COVID, has been moved to a later date, but it didn't change my deadline. I kept pushing for it to get pushing to be able to hit that goal. Peggy, I know that goal setting is something that you're really passionate about and really good with and good coaching with. Any thoughts with the SMART goals here? Yeah, hopefully, and uh, welcome to Patricia, who has joined us over here. Um, Hopefully, those who have seen some of our previous sessions will recognize that we provided some tools and had some conversations uh, around goals. And, you know, we talked about making sure that they were realistic. I gave you some wrap sheets uh, to assess your goals. And we indicated not to just have a goal statement, but to say why you want the statement, right? Um, why it's important to you. So all of this definitely um, is important and you're right. No matter what you're trying to do, you got to have goals. You, you, otherwise you're, you're just, you know, I don't know, riding the, riding the treadmill or sitting still, you know, you, <laughs> you're just, you're just going around in circles. Um, exactly. And I want to give a shout out to Jeff, Michael, William, and Monica who joined us. To sum up what Peggy said, here's your quote. A goal should scare you a little and excite you a lot. Mm-hmm. That's when you know you have a goal. I knew I had a, a major goal to want to reach. And it scared me that I may not be able to get there. But the closer I got, the more excited I became because I saw it attainable. And now I've got to reset another goal that's just a plateau. And by that, then it's the last piece for today, and that's establishing priorities. Ask yourself, how important is it to you? And once you determine how important it is to you, here's the real key. You got to be able to give up stuff. You got to make sacrifices. You got to give up time, give up friends, family, give up being a bum. Does this mean you do it all the time? No. No but you need to let them know this is what you're going for. Give them the respect that you hope they give you. And by that, I mean, let them know what your goals are. Ask them for their understanding. And I would even put that above their support. Understand that this is something important to you and where you're going with it. And then start taking inventory. What is important? Is cable TV important to you? Or do you need to turn it off? And if you turn it off, why are you still paying for it? You know, is the streaming service better? I would, we've talked many times about this. Turn off the news. There's too much noise out there right now, especially with all that's going on with our society and with uh, the COVID. No matter what you're doing, in order to achieve that vision board you have for yourself, short of winning the lottery, you're going to have to start making some some, uh, sacrifices and cutting some expenses. Otherwise, you're going to stay in the same hole you're in right now. And, you know, the the thing to remember is when you're in a hole, stop digging, because the only thing you're going to do is keep getting deeper in that hole. So work on becoming someone that is good and good being getting out of debt. Peggy, priorities. Yes, priority is super important. And I think the other thing, as I hear you talking about your goal, um, 
you know, you put it out there in a major way, mm-hmm. right? On a live stream telecast uh, to a large number of people, thousands of people. And that held you accountable, right? Right. It held you accountable. Even if you didn't, even if you hadn't hit it, mm-hmm. right? It held you accountable to do the best that you possibly could to make that happen. It kept you going. It kept you creative. Uh, it kept you pushing through obstacles, thinking out of the box, thinking of other ways to get around and push through and keep focused on the goal. And that's what priorities do for you. And that's what the vision board also does for you is put it out there in front of you, right? So even when you have your goals, I encourage you, um, as we did in earlier sessions, write your goals down, look at them. I think that's genius to have your vision on your journal. Mm -hmm. I think your goals should be on your journal too, right? Take the first page so that you look at him every day um, and figure out what action you're going to take that particular day that moves you towards one of your goals, right? Mm -hmm. What, how are you going to prioritize, keep them forefront in your mind? Uh, and, and you have a much greater chance. Um, and we've talked about before that, um, goals require Mm trade-offs. Can't have your cake and eat it too necessarily. At least not all at the same day. Yeah. Exactly. You might be able to have your cake and eat it too, but it's not going to all happen on the same day. Some things have to give in order for you to make progress. And to Absolutely. Improve. Um, just a couple of quick suggestions, and then I'm going to kind of put you on the spot for something, Peggy. Uh, trying to figure out ways to, to really cut corners and, and make a sacrifice. You know, one way to do it is just to automate your savings, even, even if it's a dollar a week or five dollars a month, whatever. Um, you know, there's a thing called compounding. If you stay with it and continue working with it, then you're going to start seeing results. The other thing, too, is don't be afraid to get a side hustle, to get something else. The one thing that highly successful people, and I don't just mean people that are that are very wealthy, that are millionaires, but highly successful people have multiple sources of income. They don't just have one J-O-B. It's multiple ways. And the, in, and the source of income could be from investing. It could be from maybe creating something. Maybe one of your passions is writing or, or music, and you're using that as a way to do it. Did you know the number one uh, searched phrase on Google is home-based business right now? Because the one thing we have discovered is that most anybody can work from home. And when I say that, I don't mean the frontline people, but most anyone else, people that thought they had to go into an office, realize they can work from home. And what does that mean? That means the time it took you to commute to work and from work, that's time that you could be looking to say, what else can I do to reach my goal? Anything else before I put you on the spot, Peggy? Oh, I don't know. Um, (laughs) Savings, uh, you know, this, um, one of the best ways I've found in the past, uh, not only for me, but for all ages, right? Take your change, empty it out every day, put it somewhere. Mm-hmm. gather it, take your loose $1 bills, mm-hmm. right? If you've got $18 in your pocket, take the three ones out, put mm-hmm. them aside. Yep. And in a month, you'll be amazed at how much there is. I love the fact, pay yourself first. Yep. Even if it's not but 50 cents or a dollar, do it. Mm-hmm. Pay yourself first and let it sit there. Leave it in an untouched account. Make it electronic, but put it in one of those second level savings that you can't get to right from the ATM or something and just forget it's even there. Mm -hmm. Once you start it, once you start it, then you'll never miss it. You'll you'll never miss it. Right. And increase it every time you get a paycheck or um, um, not a paycheck. Every time you get a a raise. Mm -hmm. Right increase what you're putting away for yourself first. Got to pay yourself first. I love it. All right, here it comes. What does being wealthy mean? We've talked and and I've given you some some ideas and guidelines that talk about 
finance, about how to cut corners. All of that is in relation to helping you create that vision and have that vision become a reality. So the task now is to come up with five words or phrases that describe wealth without mentioning income. And I'll give you an example of the first one. I'm wealthy in I have a wealth of opportunity. Hmm. So can you think of anything that you might be wealthy in that doesn't mention income or finances? Me? Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm wealthy in having a family that is close, that loves me, respects me, and um, is there for me. Love that. Anything else you can think of or things that people might be wealthy in, um, they have a wealth of, I mean, love was powerful as you just mentioned. They have a wealth I'm, of, I'm wealthy in my environment, the mm -hmm. place where I live, the amenities that I have available. I'm wealthy with my colleagues mm -hmm. uh, that I associate with. I'm wealthy in knowledge and information available to me to learn and grow. Those... And I love that. I mean, I think about there's people that have a wealth of talent, people that have a wealth of resources, meaning like you, you have a wealth of resources with your friends, your family, your colleagues. So you look at that. Here's the reason and purpose for this little exercise I created. Did you ever realize that the word wealth is only one letter removed from the word health. You change the W to the H and there it is. And that's really what we're talking about here. So wealth, I want you to think about in terms outside of finance, wealth in other ways of your life. How do you manifest that? Ask yourself, how do you manifest to create that environment and that resource out there. And when you do, guess what you're gonna create? The you you've been looking for. And there's your why. You just discovered wow. your why. Well, that was a sneaky little twist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, welcome to Latoya, who's joined us over here as well. Yes, um, and, okay, and, and, now and now Patrick you, too, yeah. Now you got so that's how you over find here. your why is you go through that process with it. And so on Thursday, we're gonna tackle what's called the circle of influence. So today we kind of set the stage for that mindset, that millennial mindset. And millennial means that they're hungry. They're out there looking for something. And I love what you said at the top of the call, Peggy, they don't see it as a risk. They don't see it as a chance. They just see it as that's who I am. I'm going out there. I'm going to do this. Mm -hmm. They don't have the inhibitions and the, and the strategies that we have to take a step back and to, mm -hmm. and to wait to see, uh, you know, what is next out there. Love it. Can't wait for next time. Yeah. So I, I, I love discussing the, the circle of influence, you can only imagine we're going to go with that. But that's where we're headed with this millennial mindset. I really encourage you to take a look at the wealth, five ways in which you're wealthy that doesn't include money, doesn't include income. Well, I'm going to work on that for next mm -hmm. time. It, it's hard. It's really hard yeah. with it. Very, very yeah. hard with it. Folks, it's the top of the hour. Thank you for your time. Come back here on Thursday. Tell your friends about it. We'll be back here at 5.30 Central, 6.30 Eastern. And until then, make it a great Tuesday. We'll see you on Thursday. All righty. Bye, Bye guys. Bye now.